you've ever asked yourself, how do I find a good investment opportunity? How do I even find the money? And is this going to bring me a good ROI? You are in the right place because this is the prime real estate mastermind. We actually have a very special gift for you this month. Michael Saracini, our guest today, actually is providing a starter kit that we'll drop the link for at the end of the episode that will help you get started in your investing journey. But the reason we wanted to have this conversation was I have been working hand in hand with Michael for years. I have watched their investment network grow to one of the biggest on the globe. But the coolest thing about it is the adaptation that these guys make. They listen, they pay attention. He is an absolute student of the game and somebody that you're going to want to pay very close attention to. Make sure that you jump into the comments. Let us know who you are, where you're from, where you are in your investment journey, and any questions, and we will make sure to jump right into it. But I, I don't want to waste any time. This one's going to be worth every second. Michael, how are you doing today? I am great, man. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm fired up. And like I said, I don't say that lightly, right? Like, give us a little bit of your backstory for people that don't know you as intimately as I do. Um, how did you get started in real estate investing? And then what led to the network? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, we've been working together for many years. You've taken care of so many of our clients at Keyspire. So I got to start by thanking you, Justin, for taking care of our people. You and your team have been amazing. You're helping them find properties. You're helping them negotiate deals. You're helping with all things real estate. So I want to start by thanking you for helping our clients for so many years. And I'm, I'm really glad and proud to be part of what you do. Yeah. And then, like I said, iron sharpens iron. I've said this to you and Scott, for those watching, Scott McGilvery is his partner in this adventure that they take and what they've built. Lindsay was actually a member. We flipped a condo for her. She wanted to do another one. She went to one of your summits. Next thing I know, she went and got a real estate license and now she's working with us and she's crossing both bridges. So it's pretty cool to see this come full circle on this episode. I yeah, love it. I'm super excited for this episode. Uh, Keyspire has totally transformed my life and introduced me to Justin. So it's so great that um, I, yeah, I'm just so excited for this episode today. Yeah, so yeah. let's get, let's jump right into the background, Michael. Like, what was your first real estate investment? So yeah, it's interesting. So uh, my business partner in real estate and in Keyspire, our real estate coaching company is Scott McGillivray. Scott and I have been doing this for 22 years together and on our own. We run real estate businesses separately and together and he inspired all kinds of really cool things. When we started, we were broke university students and we coach a lot of clients that start with money. And I say, if you start with a dollar, if you start with zero dollars, you're ahead of where we were when we started because we were in debt, our student loans, our knowledge debt, which is even more impactful than financial debt. Uh, we're 20 year old kids. We didn't know what was going on. We just knew we had a purpose and a passion to make it happen. And we spent the last 22 years and we'll spend the next 22 years and beyond being students of the craft. Just like you said, Justin, learning every single day. I learn every day. Actually, I, I wrote down a list right before we went live here of the top five things that I'm doing right now. So if we get to a few of them, that would be really cool because I, I'm learning things every day. Um, but yeah, we started when we were 20 years old or university, we were broke students and we knew we needed to have a, a better life in the future. We didn't know what that looked like and didn't live enough life to really understand, um, uh, you know, what we would do with that money or that wealth, but we wanted to make more of an impact. So we tried a whole bunch of different businesses and uh, they were good and they were okay. And everything though led to one ultimate conclusion is real estate being the absolute best thing that we could do. And we did the, we looked at the research and who's being wealthy, who makes money, where the wealth is held of people that are making millions in these tech stocks or billions. It was coming off of the year 2000, the, the tech market had just crashed, but there was a lot of uh, millionaires, multimillionaires from Yahoo. And we looked at them, you know, the, 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 the website, we looked at them, we said, they have their money in real estate. Why are we putting our money in real estate? So. That's what led us to real estate 22 years ago. We never looked back. Well, we're definitely going to jump into that top five list. But, you know, we are in a time where we've seen a big shift in the market. You know, we've been spending tons of time working with economists, batting out on the hatches, sharpening our sword on our end. How do you adapt in shifting markets, right? Because a lot of times these are opportunity zones, yet you want to make sure you keep your margins tight and you're being a little bit cautious. How have you adapted being in it for so long to 2000, 2008 and the market that we're in right now? Yeah, we so we've just come out of for me, this is the third time going through this this uh, degree of variability in the market. And mm -hmm. no doubt this is a very unique time. 
we have consistency for five or six years or eight years, and then things go crazy. And then we have consistency for six to eight years, and then things go crazy. It happened the, around the year 2000, right around when I started. Real estate was a re- in turmoil off of the tech bubble bursting and real estate uh, being uh, up in the air and the uncertainty in the market, the investor market. That's when I started. And everyone told me not to invest in real estate because of the uncertainty around the market, which is probably what people tell people today because of the uncertainty. And then it happened again in 2008, 2009 uh, with the uh, the entire financial market collapse in that situation. So I, I lived through that. And now living through this, the same thing comes to mind. The same thing I've seen every single time, the same conclusion I come to is the best times to become a real estate investor are times of uncertainty. And I, I have to I have to explain and give people some tools here. And I brought I brought a free gift for everyone uh, for one tool that I just created. I absolutely love that everyone can take with them. We'll we'll pop the link up in a little bit here. Um, but this is where the millionaires are made in times of uncertainty. In times of certainty, everybody goes out and buys property, or everybody goes out and does the same investment, and then 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 everybody's when everybody's doing it, all of that money being made is divided over less people. Now is the best time to get involved in something that makes sense, like real estate, because the money that's being made, and money will still be made. Let's you know, make no mistake. The market could go up, it could go down. Market will, uh, money will still be made, uh, but that money, instead of being distributed over, say, 50% of the population, I get that number because generally half the people will do nothing in, in any market and half the people will do something, take action. Well, in a market like this of high uncertainty, it's more like 95-5, being 95% of people pause, they do nothing, and 5% of people continue moving forward with their business, with their goals, with their path. And all of that wealth that gets created focuses now into 5% of the people. And this is the third time I've seen this, and I'm experiencing it again now, not only in my own portfolio, but in our client success at Keyspire. The people that are actually making it happen, that are doing it, are, are set up for some incredible wealth gains, just like happened in 99, 2000, just like happened 2008, 2009, and it's happening again. So that's what I would say I've learned over the last 22 years in history rhyming and repeating itself is we're seeing this again happening right now is this uncertainty is creating a massive opportunity. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's so great to hear from someone that's been through different markets, different shifts in the market. So getting your outlook on it is great. Where would you say that the opportunity is right now? Yes, taking action and getting started. But what type of deals are you looking at? Are you seeing your um, membership looking at? What would you say is where great opportunity is other than taking action? Yeah, I think it's a hard question to generalize, but it's a great question in terms of, you know, if somebody somebody asks me, Michael, what is the exact property or situation or strategy that is the best opportunity now? And I wouldn't be able to answer that without without a conversation. To me, that's that's custom to each person. You know, for some people, uh, multi-res might be an amazing opportunity right now because of their situation. For some people, renovations and flipping properties might be where the opportunity is. So I don't want to um, get anyone excited about one opportunity or over another, but what I will get people excited about is the opportunity is today. It's the timing is the opportunity. It's not necessarily one investment to me. You might have other experts coming on and say, you know what, this is the opportunity because that's what they know. But I would say for me, the opportunity is the timing. The opportunity is the uncertainty. It's the fact that whatever you're going to do, if you were to do something over the next 12 to 18 months, you do something now and you see that over the 12, next 12 to 18 months, that becomes the zone of opportunity. And so that's how, that's how I'll answer that. The opportunity is not a, a real estate investment to me. The opportunity is, is the time and where we are today. It's the equivalent of when people ask me, how's the market, right? I'm like, well, that, that's a loaded question because we could talk about a million markets, residential, commercial, investing, agricultural. And, you know, when I talk to people about what's happening right now, the Warren Buffett quote, be fearful when men are greedy and greedy when men are fearful rings true because my wife and I, even for our portfolio, when we're making acquisitions, we're buying stuff, we purchase boring assets, right? We like land, we like commercial stuff. And quite often when we're looking at the metrics of it. The lending costs have increased. So that even if the value of the properties drop 300 grand, the cost of borrow is the same, but we constantly look at deals and we're like, you know, it's interesting. 
if I could buy that right now, I'm happy to pay the increased lending cost. If I know I'm going to get a quarter million added to my balance sheet in three or four years when the market rebounds, I think that's the dynamic that you're talking about where, you know, real estate, you want to know what's happening from a macroeconomic perspective, but getting very narrow in your strategy of what fits my portfolio on and what's a deal to me kind of takes you out of that group think that I think a lot of people are stuck in, right? That's exactly it. And, you know, when people work with you and your team or they work with my coaching team, that's the first thing that we do is we get them zeroed in on the strategy that works for them and the market that works for them and the, the situation that works for them. Because there's there's opportunity, there's there's profit and loss in every market geographically. There's profit and loss in every time of the world, whether it's five years ago, five years from today or now. And it's the people with the right tools that uh, coincidentally tend to find the most profit and the most opportunity. And I say coincidentally, of course, as a joke, if you have the right tools and you have the right training and the right team, then you're much more likely to find these little pockets and corners of opportunity. 100%. I feel the same way as soon as I, you get around the right people, you get around people that are doing what you want to achieve, you see a lot more opportunity. So it was a little bit of a trick question. <laughs> I am going to share the kit that you wanted to provide the audience with. This came as a surprise right before we actually launched it. So do you want to break this down a little bit, Michael? Yeah. So the starter kit has to do with the fact that um, if you're watching right now, whether you're live or you're going to watch this later on, you're going to be excited about real estate because of the opportunities. But, but Justin, I don't want anyone to leave and say, all right, Michael and Justin said to do it. We're going to go invest in real estate. We're just going to buy a property. You have to have the right tools. That is the caveat. Being a dentist is an amazing opportunity, but don't just go and pull people's teeth out and do whatever it is dentists do, fillings. You've got to get the right tools and the right training. And so this is part of my, my pledge to be able to provide tools and training. This is a starter kit. So anyone who's starting in real estate, this is an absolute necessity for you. If you've been doing this for 10 years, you're going to get things in here that you've never seen before or never got before. I know because we just released one of these tools about three weeks ago with Keyspire. It's new and it only exists with us. So it's absolutely amazing. So uh, if you if you uh, download the starter kit, you just put your name and email, download the starter kit. You're also going to get our weekly series where uh, we're going to send our newest tip to you, our newest tactic every single week. But what we're going to give you is you're going to get, so Scott, I decided to give this away for free. This is our special report. We see it up there, OPM and Profitable Partnerships. It's got the that one right there. It's a report on how to create collaborations. I think that's what we want to talk about a little bit today as well. How do you get other people's money through collaborations? This is an absolute must have. And then we're going to get to the ROI scorecard. So the ROI scorecard is a way, is the only way where I would ever recommend you do a simple, quick vetting or testing of of any uh, investment that you're looking at. And so I realized when I help people, family and friends, I don't coach clients directly. I've got an amazing team of over 15 that does that. But if I'm chatting with family and friends, this is the first thing they need to look at. Look at. And I'm treating all of you like my family and my friends here. And I want you to look at this first. And so let me, um, Justin, if you can go full screen, I'm actually gonna pull it up and show everybody how this works here. This oh yeah, yeah, hold on one second here. And we're good. So here, I'll actually, Take me and Lindsay out and just focus on you. Give me one second. Yeah, there you go. My unique ability is not producer. So I, this is as, this is as high tech as I get here. It looks like this. So um, I have the ROI scorecard and it looks like this. It is a one pager that you can fill out electronically or you can download. The, the ROI scorecard comes with a ROI scorecard guide that looks like this. So this explains how to use the ROI scorecard. You get both of these uh, when you download your starter kit. You're also going to get the uh, the team building guide. So what team members you need off to the uh, right off the bat, and you have a space to fill them all in, so they're organized in one spot. And you're going to get a a, a guide. Uh, I think it's a 20 page guide on how to actually qualify your team members. So absolutely, absolutely critical. But here's how this works: is we have the concept of the four ways to win. So Justin, we've been doing this for years with our with our shared clients, and I know you uh, coach your clients through this. These are the four ways that a real estate investment makes you money. All right, you've got your cash flow. That's how much cash it produces at the end of the month. You've got your principal recapture. That's how much of the mortgage you pay down every single, every single month or every single year. We're going to go annual, so I'll use annual numbers. You've got active appreciation. That's how much the value has gone up for the renovations that you've done. And you have passive appreciation at the bottom here. That's how much the value has gone up based on the market moving up or down. 
how the market moves. So what we're going to do is you're going to calculate all four of those and you're going to move left to right, very simply like a flow chart. And you're going to put those numbers in these four boxes, right? All of those add up to this box right here. That's your year one profit or your year one return. Now we're going to divide that by this box is going to be your cash invested. How much did you actually put into the deal? You put that number in this box and then you multiply by 100. It goes right to this box here, your ROI year one. Now, this seems pretty straightforward. I've just put it in a very organized way for everyone. The rest of this is where the magic happens, these next two boxes. Because what I found working with clients and talking to our coaches is that uh, people, people know how to calculate their ROI pretty quickly when we teach them the four ways to win. But the next question is, so what? So what does this mean for me? Or in other words, is this good or is this not good? And that answer is different for every single person because every single investor will require a different ROI to get out of the business what they want. So what we do is we have this extra little box here called my minimum return. Right here called my minimum return. That's where you're gonna put in, what is the minimum return that you wanna get as an investment? Most people don't think about this and most people don't know. You have to decide what your minimum return is to know if this property will ever be good for you before you even think about granite countertops versus regular or zoning or anything else. Will the numbers work? One page, you see if the math actually works. So you're going to put your minimum return in there. It might be 15% or 20%. If you're in the use of the stock market, it's probably 3 or 4%. If you're a GIC investor, it's 1%. Uh, maybe today it's 3%. If you're a cash investor, it's negative 6%. So you get the point. Um, some of the other investments compared to real estate aren't really that good. So you might have 15% as your minimum return. Now you're simply going to divide the year, year one return divided by your minimum return. And you're going to get your ROI score in this blue box. That is the important number that you're going to look at every property before you start all of the work in terms of due diligence and all of the qualifying work. Does this qualify based on your score? And on the R, uh, R, ROI scorecard guide, we actually have a scoring system, all right, down here. So depending on the number you get, we're going to guide you on what to do next. And so from zero to, uh, zero to 0.49 to 0.99, one to 1.49 and so on. So on the bottom here is the actual scoring key. So you can calculate your ROI score and you'll know what to do next. And then you can take that to someone like Justin and his team and make some magic happen with this property. Or you know that property is wasting your time and you can move on to the next one. Justin, what this allows investors to do is quickly go through five or 10 properties, quick, 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 bang, 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 and pick the best ones right off the bat. So you're saving your time and you're saving your team's time. So it's absolutely amazing. I'm gonna do a quick little example here. This is a little bit, uh, here's, is, I talked about my, uh, my production value. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll impress you. Let me see if I can get this zoomed in on my end. I think I can. Okay, so let me see if I can get this. Yeah, I can get it zoomed in a little bit here. Okay, so I've done a little example here. I'm gonna read you the numbers. So the cash flow on this example property is $1,200 a year. When we go down the principal recapture, oh, I should tell you the, the, the value of the property. I'm doing a million dollar property. So if you're watching right now and you're doing a million dollar property, and you're putting 20% down, which is $200,000 down. And I did an interest rate of maybe 5.6%, something like that, five and a half, six percent And I did all the numbers. So this is, the, this is how you use the scorecard. All right, so I started with the cash flow is $1,200 a month. The principal recapture, that's how much the mortgage I pay down in year one is $5,100. The active appreciation is $0. Okay? That is saying we have a turnkey property, doesn't take any renovations. Uh, it's not a lot of work to do this property, not a lot of renovations. And then our passive appreciation is $30,000. I did a 3% market increase. 3% over five years, or over 10 years, or even over two or three years is not unreasonable. It's lower than we've seen in the last 25 years, but I decided to be conservative and do a 3% market increase. So that's $30,000 in increased value. We wrap all that up, we add it up, and we have our uh, profit for year one of $36,300 right here. We divide that by the amount we put in. $200,000 was our down payment. Now, this will actually be a little bit higher when you do your numbers because you might have some closing costs or, or some other costs. But to keep the math simple, we're going to do $200,000 to demonstrate. When we divide our return over our investment, our ROI, our return on investment for year one is 18.2%. Now, year one is always the worst year because year two and year three, you often pay 
uh, pay down more of your principal and less of your interest when it comes to box two. So this number tends to increase, plus rents generally go up over time. So year one is usually the worst year for the property. This year is 18.2%. We're gonna divide that by the minimum return. So in this example, it's a 15% minimum return. And our magic number is 1.21. The score on this demonstration property, fictitious property is 1.21. That's how you use this ROI scorecard. And then when I look at my guide, 1.21 gives me some instructions and it says, great find, great score. Move forward with this, proceed with due diligence. So it doesn't mean we buy the property, it means that yes, this passes the first phase of my test and now we can take this and we can start our due diligence. So that's a brief description of how to use the ROI scorecard. Uh, so uh, Justin, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you because I've, I've, I've taken over a little too uh, long enough there. Was that, was that description clear? Was that helpful? Very much so. And it's a prime example, no pun intended, of how you guys keep evolving the network and the value. I mean, for context for the viewers, the four ways to win, they taught me years ago and I run it for all our investors, right? And it's a more right. comprehensive analysis on the, the ROI mm -hmm. of a property. A lot of the bullish people when it comes to real estate always talk about, well, you're not factoring in maintenance on the property, vacancy and bad debt, so on and so forth. And we do. We actually build in a lot of contingencies. So if the market completely shifts, we're looking at 10, 25 year terms and we're actually trying to use analysis to kill a deal. And if it survives five or six different ways and it yeah. makes it to stage six or seven, we know it's better off. Right. And I think people's yeah. perception of people like us, whether me on the sales side or you guys on the coaching and the education side, don't understand that you're actually doing this to protect people from the wrong deals, but actually help them to find the right deal. So I'll drop that link actually in the chat so everybody can get it. I'll send it out in the replay. I'm going to reshare this out with our newsletter as well, because I do think it's very, very valuable, but it leads to the evolution of Keyspire, how you guys just keep bringing new tools to the table before we get into that and the evolution of the network where did the concept for Keyspire even start? Like, how did you even think to start one of the world's largest education platforms when it comes to real estate investing? Yeah, the way it started, um, it, it was a progression like anything, but there's a couple moments that stick out in my mind. The first was when Scott and I went to a educational workshop for real estate. We wanted to learn more about real estate. We're probably three or four years in. And at that point, we realized that, I hope a lot of people realize before three or four years in that, Hey, there's shortcuts out there. There are people that have already done this. So I'm struggling, I'm working hard, and maybe somebody has already figured this out over the last three or four years, what I've, what I've tried to do. So we realized that finding shortcuts is the way we're gonna reach our goals. We're gonna to get to our goal faster by finding shortcuts. And one of the ways that we found to do that is being educated in real estate. So we would go to real estate workshops and free events and you know, there wasn't podcasts back then. There wasn't even YouTube back then. So you can imagine the advantage of everybody right now. If you're watching this, you have a massive advantage over younger Michael and Scott um, and over anyone who's invested since the beginning of time, other than the last, you know, 20, 18 years or so, 17 years when YouTube was created. So we had to learn it through workshops and seminars and live events. And so we would go to these and I remember we would always leave saying, you know what, that seemed a little light. That seemed a little American, a lot of them, because there wasn't there wasn't any Canadian companies that were doing uh, the education on the scale that the American companies. So it'd always be the American companies coming in, and they would teach things, and they would say, you know, uh, who wants to be quit their job in thirty days? Who wants to, you know, buy ten foreclosures on their street? And you know, we're looking. Who wants to go to auction and get? And we're looking at each other. We're like that. Although that happens a little bit, that's not so much a strategy in Canada. And, you know, no one's really doing that. And foreclosures work differently. And so we got to talking to people uh, during lunches and after the event. And they said, why don't, why don't you guys teach this class? Because we were telling them everything we've learned in three years. We realized that we already had the shortcuts in us. We were still looking for more, but we already had them. So Scott and I looked at each other and we went out for dinner after. And we said, why don't we just teach that class? Why don't we just start a company that teaches people. So that was probably 2004. And that was really interesting and nothing really came out of it. That was just kind of the seed that was planted. Sometimes a seed gets planted and it grows four years later. So here we were then four years later, we were in season two of Income Property, which is the longest running real estate investing show ever. It's it's in 40 countries. I mean, I think, that, you know, we all know Income Property, Justin, you and Scott, 
uh, know each other well and, you know, do business. And so uh, we, we were filming Income Property. Uh, and in season three, I decided to leave the show to start the education company, uh, Keyspire, because we were getting so many questions in through viewers of all of the gaps that we can't fill on TV. Like we have 21 or 22 minutes to show you an entire process that, you know, would take a year of coaching. We now teach that in a whole year of coaching. And so how do I get a contractor? How do I build my team? How do I get financing? And so we said, there's so many questions here. There's so many people that need additional help. Let's dust off that workshop vision or idea and let's do some live events to teach people. And that's exactly what we did. And that's how Keyspire was born. I left the show to start doing live events to teach people about real estate investing. I love it. And that's so true. There's so many HGTV shows that it's like, oh, I can flip a house in half an hour. Let's do it. Right. So, but there's a lot of that education gap between that. How have you guys been able to pivot, keep up with the market, the shifts, everything like that, uh, grow into what Keyspire is today? How has it evolved and how did you get there? Yeah. And that's always important in real estate or any business or any value add. Uh, it starts by having a great team. We've got a great team at Keyspire. We have over 50 people all around North America that do everything from create content to deliver content to help with people that want to enroll uh, to all the back end finance and interesting stuff that has to happen in a business. We got a great team. And because of the team, we've managed to ebb and flow and shift, especially through the craziness of 2020 that uh, it was, we were a live event business and then all live events got shut down. And here we are, we're still here because we adapted and we found a way to deliver our value in a better way. So I got to put it to the team because I have a great team behind me that uh, is able to ebb and flow with the changes in the world. We've been able to produce more value and faster than ever before. We do that through our unique tools, just like this one. By the end of next year, we'll have over 150 unique tools for any of our coaching clients that come on board in the year afterwards. We have so many different tools. One of them is really cool, Justin. It's called Competitor to Collaborator, which, which uh, we should have time to talk about today. Uh, but uh, we build these unique tools. We build these unique systems. Our coaches, we have over 15 coaches doing over thousands of, I don't even know how many sessions a month, thousands of sessions. So the collective mind of our coaching team, when we meet and we talk about real estate, there is so much value there that I could never learn it on my own. There's no way I could know that much about real estate, even if I work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's really this focus of the team's energy, taking the best of what everybody's doing and distilling it out into unique tools that the market needs today. I, I love it. I, and I can echo that in spades, right? So when we met, I'm very candid about my relationship with you guys and how you earned every piece of loyalty you have from the Prime Nation just by seeing, and this is the biggest thing, you listening to the members and the team, and it's not just the Scott and Michael show, you would take in things that they would tell you and I'd see them implemented at the next summit. You know, there was never a point where, you know, I literally just came in and had to pay, pay to have a booth set up. Like that was such an indicator of who you guys were. It was no, no, we want the best people in every single market. Yeah, you're gonna have to work really hard when you're there and you're gonna have to deliver on your promise. And even the quality control of, you know, the, the guys that handle us and the relationships with the clients, making sure the members are being taken care of. I love that because it holds us to a certain level of standard. And I still remember meeting you and Scott the first time I left the summit. Um, and I was not prepared for the first one at all. I showed up with a binder of properties by myself and I just got blasted with a, a high number of people. But I, I remember saying to both of you that I would be committed to building out a division to service those members. So this isn't a pay to play thing where I just brought Michael on and he's like, hey, get me on your podcast quite the other way around. It was like, I want to bring people on and explain to them what you guys are doing. And this is why, Michael, over the last almost 10 years, I have watched many other networks pop up, rip off and duplicate, regurgitate information that they've taken from other seminars. And, you know, you and Scott were inspired by seminars. A lot of those other people that have regurgitated the information online are nowhere to be seen because all of a sudden what they were teaching didn't stand the test of time. How did you separate yourselves from the pack when it got so noisy? Because as good as the internet is, it's almost detrimental to some investors because there's so many people out there giving advice that isn't necessarily vetted. Yeah, I think uh, there's a couple things that we continue to do. I, I think the um, one of the okay one is we were first to market. I mean, we were one of the biggest to grow in Canada quickly at what we do. 
Uh, so anyone who coming in has, has a difficult time competing, we've educated hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in Canada alone and hundreds of thousands in the US. So it's hard to get to that scale really quickly. It's hard to get to that level of experience, I'll say. And so that's one of the things that differentiates us is just time in the market. We've been officially around for 12 years, but you know, Scott and I started dreaming this up and working on this over 20 years ago. And so that, you know, it speaks volumes in terms of uh, the experience. Most of our team has been with us for five to 10 years. Even so it's not like we have a team that is new all the time. Our team knows what's going on. They know our clients, our coaches have all been with us for, you know, five plus years. So um, they they one, know me better than some of the people I went to high school with, like they're yeah. family, family. There's not a lot of turnover there, which is really cool to see. Yeah. It's, it's experience. Um, it is a laser focus on what we do best. We do real estate investor coaching. That's what we're laser focused on. And a lot of companies will get distracted and do all different things. And we always ask ourselves is what we're doing, contributing to our coaching of a client, whether it's through like this, me coaching somebody through a scorecard like this, or one of our coaches, in a one-on-one or group coaching session, we're laser focused on adding value through that mechanism of real estate investor coaching. So that's that's number two. We we don't get distracted. We try not to get distracted, and, and the team holds me accountable because I'm a distractible entrepreneur that likes all kinds of really interesting things. But we don't as a company. We stay laser focused, and we want to continue to be the best in the world at coaching. I think that's that's where the magic is for us uh, and for the investor. Yeah, and always always creating unique tools. When I'm working in my business or when I read something from a client and it says, hey, this was really helpful, my brain, my unique ability goes into building a one page or like this. I say, how can I simplify this entire thing into one page? You've seen it at the summit, Justin, anytime you've popped into my sessions, everything's one slide, your entire portfolio on one slide, your entire process on one slide. And so that's, um, that's something that we do that nobody else does in the marketplace right now is to simplify into one slide so that the client can multiply. Yeah. I simplify and multiply. It's awesome. The way that you present the information is just easy to understand. And another thing that I really admire about what you guys have built is the network. The network that you guys have, the amount of people, the people that are doing great things is so amazing so what has um how have you been able to scale the network and also um what kind of access do, do you have to deals now like what how are deals different now that you have such an amazing amount of um investors in your network sorry if my yeah. internet was cutting out there yeah no i i heard you it's, it's great to talk about the network in any situation you know we want to talk about collaborations too today justin and that's so important collaborations um and to do that you need to have a network uh, I, I i tell my kids you know that focus on your relationships i have a three-year-old no a grade three a five-year-old and, and an eight-year-old and when i when they come home from school i don't ask them what they learn I asked them who they played with, who they hung out with, what relationships that they want to nurture, what relationships maybe aren't important to them. And I say that with, with my kids because that is what I've realized in my life now that is what's going to bring value to the world and bring value to your business and what's going to allow you to run one business or multiple businesses with the least amount of time is people, is relationships. And so the fact that we are nurturing this network is so important to the uniqueness that Keyspire brings. And anyone who's watching, make sure you're part of some network because you can't go it alone. If you can do it alone and be successful, you'll be 10 times more successful with people. And at the end of the day, you'll have more fun. Like this has got to be fun. And being around people makes it interesting, makes it fun and makes it enjoyable. And so uh, the network is very important. We have a unique network. People have to qualify to get into our inner circle network. Uh, and uh, they all have the same tools. I think that's what makes us unique. If you talk about the, R, the four ways to win with anyone in our network, boom, everyone knows the language. It's a culture. Everyone knows what the language is. You talk about total portfolio management, boom, they already know what you're talking about. Investment laddering, everyone knows what you're talking about. So we've created a, a language and a culture within our network, which makes it easy for people to communicate within the network and know exactly what they're talking about. They can get 30 minutes of ideas across in five or 10 minutes if they're up to speed with the language and the tools. I don't think I've ever said this to you, but one thing I keep telling people when we're at the summit, so like day one, day two, I'm always telling people, listen, how are you enjoying yourself? And they're always like, it's fantastic. There's a lot of information. Like you are going to be a sponge by the day, time we get to Sunday, you're going to understand words. 
you didn't even realize you picked up, right? Like just being in the ecosystem is going to put you in proximity to people. Don't worry about remembering every word and writing everything down. Immerse yourself in the experience and the network and don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, that said, how would you advise a newer person maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the size and scale of some networks to enter that ecosystem and maximize it? Yeah, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the greatest path to success is getting started. Right? That is the uh, Mark Twain said that. That's the most important thing is getting started. That's the easiest path to success. And most people just won't get started. If you're an extrovert like myself or you, Justin, it's easy for us to say, hey, just go to a networking group, start talking to people. But I, I have introverts in my life and they're like, that terrifies me. So, you know, what do you do to your point? Well, we have this amazing new thing that wasn't around when I started called the internet and groups online. So one of the ways to get started is to take action. If you don't want to be in person or you're, it's a little bit uh, intimidating, get online, get part of a group online. We have a great Facebook group with, it's free with over 30,000, I don't know how many people called Real Estate Millionaires by Keyspire. So, I mean, that's one of the ways, obviously I know that group more than others. So I would say that's one of the ways if you want to get started for free, uh, if you're a coaching client of ours, make sure you know you get into the inner circle group because uh, there's a lot of value there. But just get started. If you're an extrovert and you like, like I like going in person, mm -hmm. go in person with everything you can. Pay for it. You get the free stuff. You get the free quality. So I say go, go pay for it. Learn about them for free. Everyone has a free something to learn about, and then go, go pay for it. Get part of you know access to that group that's willing to pay. Um, so those are some of the things that I would do. And I, and I do right now in business in terms of my mastermind groups in business, I make sure I'm like, what's the top package I could buy? Cause those are the people that I want to be with. How many thousand, tens of thousands of dollars can I pay to be with people that paid the same amount? Cause I know they're pretty serious. And so when I go to my business masterminds, that's what I look for. Yeah, definitely. I've made so many great friends through the Keyspire Network. Um, great connections. Um, so yeah. I'm very thankful for that inner circle community and all the community that Keyspire brings. But I love yours and Scott's dynamic. What has um, created such a successful community um, and business between the the two of you? How have you been able to balance your dynamic and um, create Keyspire? Yeah, well, the, the, you know, getting into the idea of collaboration and partnerships uh, with Scott and I. Scott and I are very different people. We've done all kinds of different really cool um, assessments, psychological assessments to see how we work better together and with other people. We're very different people in terms of how we approach a situation. So we have to be, we have to recognize that if we have the same goal, being very different is a massive asset. It's a, it's a massive advantage. And so we work to our advantage when it comes to our differences. And it comes to the things where we're similar. We understand those as well. So awareness is the word I can use in terms of any collaboration, whether it's myself and Scott, me, I have different business partners in my real estate development world. And it's just a matter of awareness, awareness on, on where you bring unique value to the relationship and awareness where you do not bring unique value. And the rule is very simple. You bring, you do what you do best and you find partners that do the things you don't do well. Very simple. That's my that's my number one rule. That's my way to bring a, a competitor to a collaborator. And often, the people that you should partner with are competitors, or would be would be seen as competitors at first glance. It's absolutely crazy to think about it that way. Um, but you know, in the real estate education space, especially after the pandemic shift, everyone's a real estate educator now online. Um, that we've seen. There's so many different YouTube videos and everything that wasn't around there before. Um, and so, you know, someone might say these are co competitors for me and my team. And I say, no, these are collaborators. If you're educating, Justin, if you're educating people, let's collaborate. Let's educate together instead of trying to, see, you know, we're both giving the same information, the same video and trying to be better with better lighting and better graphics. No, let's do it together. If I had a podcast, you'd be on my podcast tomorrow. And let's collaborate on the things that, you know, people might think are, are there's friction. So all of that to answer the question in terms of, Find out what you're really good at, what your unique ability, your unique value is, and just focus on bringing that to the partnership. And then you find the people that don't have that. And those are your best partners. You know, getting focused. We talked earlier about building your portfolio and getting focused on what you want to purchase. I think it's the exact same thing in business, right? Getting zero focused in on where you bring value, where you actually find your flow and your enjoyment in your work, right? Analyzing deals, creating the PDFs to help people kind of get to that next level. That's not how my brain works at all. 
when you talk about collaboration over competition, I had Aviva Sonnen Rich. Actually, I pre-recorded a podcast last week. It's going to come out in about a week or so. I was literally thinking of you and Scott. So she blew up on TikTok during the pandemic. She's about a million plus, and she's in commercial real estate in Denver, Colorado. All she teaches is investing in warehousing, right? And I'm like, that's such an interesting niche. And it is very valuable to have triple net leases in the commercial space. I'm like, you need to meet Michael and Scott. I'm sure somehow, some way there's a collaboration. And I think there's a difference between the scarcity mindset where some people are so worried that somebody else is going to come and take what they have versus going out and building and building and building because there's so much opportunity. It is a mindset thing that you can't really teach though, right? Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about that. How, how do we help people collaborate more that are watching right now? And uh, I think about how important a collaboration is today versus any time in the real estate market cycle. So if you look at the real estate market cycle in most places of the country and everywhere is different, every location is different. You know, we had a nice run up and now we've seen prices cool for six to eight months or so. It's kind of it's kind of cusped over and now it's it's cooling a little bit and it'll probably cool a little bit more until rates uh, what I told my, my partners in, in our development company, I said, prices are going to keep cooling until there's two interest rate announcements. This is just my prediction. Two interest rate announcements, maybe three, where there's no change. That's where the uncertainty will start to dissolve in the market. And that's where you're going to see some momentum pick back up. That's just my, my, my crystal ball, which is always a dangerous thing to do, but I'll do it. So the market is, is cusping. It might continue to slide a little bit more. And then it'll... it'll It'll pop back up and it'll go down and pop back up. It's done it for 22 years since I've been watching it. It's done it for a thousand years. and It'll continue to, to do this, this market oscillation. But where we are right now, where the market has slid a little bit and it will probably continue to slide a little more in the short term, collaborations are more important than ever because good inventory, I mean, even six months ago, you know, this good inventory is so hard to find. You have 10 investors and they're all fighting over the same property. So to talk about inventory, my solution for inventory for our clients is very simple. Collaborate. Collaborate on a property. Instead of three of you being competitors and all having competing offers, and I offer this, you offer that, I offer this, you offer that, and you're going to pay 50000 more for a, a, a property because you've competed, become, colla become collaborators, joint venture, partner on it, and then you get it for a much less price because you're not competing with each other. You might be competing with other people, but you're taking competitors out of the market. And now you're going to collaborate and sure you only own half a property or a third of a property, depending on how many partners, but you have a third of the resources in a third of the risk. So it almost always works out to be better to collaborate. So in this market where number one, inventory is low. And especially last year, I was telling people inventory is low. You have to collaborate in order to get your properties. And number two, when the market has seen a slide and it will continue to slide, collaborating is absolutely critical to make sure that you have the right resources in a deal. Yeah. And I think the, a, a tribe and a community of people can give you so many different looks. One massive change we made over the last six or seven months is really putting parameters around the exclusivity that we will give certain people within our network versus say the general public that mm -hmm. isn't necessarily as vetted, right? As much as I, I love to give you guys my cosign and tell people, you know, that that comes with an inherent value. I think collaborations in a network, there is so much value in that human capital and you never know where the deal is going to come from. That's the craziest thing. How many times have you been given a deal or shown a deal just because of a relationship in your past? Yeah, it's uh, they all come from relationships. Like yeah. when we, when we buy land with tens of millions of dollars of land, development land that we're developing and selling. All of the purchases have come from collaborations. It's not like I'm looking on MLS to buy a seven million dollar, you know, uh, undervalued development property. All the have, uh, properties have come from collaboration, and uh, the plan is all of the properties be sold on collaborations to the relationships that we make with builders and other developers and things like that. So. Um, absolutely. And my business is all collaboration. It wasn't always like that, but now it's all collaboration. Uh, when I learned that it just put, you know, some rocket fuel on the fire, even an investor looking to just, you know, buy a small scale, I say compared to, you know, these are tens of millions of dollars of land. Sure. You just want to buy one property. you got to collaborate with someone like Justin and his team. It's like, that's a collaboration. That's, a, that's a, a form of a partnership in where you're working together for a common goal. You're using his team's resources, his team's knowledge, his team's ability to find properties and his team's network. That's one of the best ways to get somebody's network is to just get 
a great realtor on board because you instantly plug into their their network when you're doing something in, in real estate. It drives me crazy when people say, I'm going to sell it myself. I'm going to buy it or sell it myself because I'm going to save some realtor fees. I've done that a couple of times and uh, I've saved a little bit of money, but my money has been made when I've connected with a realtor, a professional realtor, and I've paid them whatever they want. I don't even negotiate the fee. If I say, you're going to do, I need access to your network to do this deal. And they say, absolutely. That's why I'm here. And so that's one of the great ways to get into a network, pay people what they're worth, and it'll come back to you when you access their network. We talked about personal development earlier, Michael. I mean, I, I've invested more in myself probably in the last five to 10 years than I have my entire life. I wish I could go back. I wish I could do more. But the good thing is there's platforms like this. You know, there's the group. There's the key, uh, Millionaires by Keyspire. There's the Prime Real Estate Mastermind community. You guys can watch the replay. You can go follow Michael as well. And then make sure you're in the Facebook group. I will drop the link for the free gift that he gave you guys today. I'm looking forward to seeing you very much at the end of the month, Michael, and collaborating even more. But any final words? You're standing at the top of a mountain. The entire world is below you. What would your parting wisdom be for our audience? Yeah. Uh, so what, I, what I'll leave everyone with uh, is a, a model that I think about a thought experiment where I go from, from the, the P's to the C's in collaborating. And so let me explain what this means. If, if it gives everyone a little visual of this or a thought experiment. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a scientist by heart. I went to, I, I got a science degree and I still love science models. Maybe that's why I love real estate, building models like this. But in the, in the animal kingdom, there's four types of animals. You've got the predator and then you've got the parasite and then you've got the competitor and then you've got the collaborator, which is called symbiotic or symbiosis or symbiotic relationship. So at the bottom of the barrel, in, 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 so there's four real estate relationships as well. Predator, parasite, the competitor, and the collaborator. And the more you can move from P to C, the more successful you will be in real estate. First comes the predator. They will eat what they kill and they will take advantage of everyone. They will make money at all costs. They will, uh, they will, they will take the properties from you. They will be honest or dishonest, but it's the predator. It's, it's, they want to destroy everyone around them. And there's people that do this. Then there's the parasite. All right, they're not going to destroy everyone around them, but they're slowly going to suck. They're slowly going to take off a little bit of money, a little bit of money here and there without adding value. They're just going to take, take, take and not add value. So be on the lookout for predators and parasites. You don't want to do business with those. You don't want to collaborate with those. And then it comes to competitors. Competitors do honest competition and they just try and beat you. They try to be better. And that's where most real estate investors live is in the collaborator world. Well, there's one more C that we talked about to close out our thoughts uh, from competitor and it's collaborator. If you can learn to move from co competitor, stay away from the piece, the predator and the parasite and move into uh, from a competitor to a collaborator. Think about you moving through this, this spectrum. You will always be more successful in your real estate endeavors, in your partnerships in life and the things that you just do overall in life and the success that you have. So moving from the P's to the C's is how I think about it when I think about collaboration. Well, I appreciate your time very, very much, Michael. And we'll see you at the end of the month. Everybody else, feel free to jump in the comments. Let us know what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. Hit that subscription button so you don't miss any future masterminds and you get to follow Michael's journey from here. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks, Justin. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye, everyone. See ya.